In episode 167 of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, I'm sharing my favorite bodyweight exercises. Don't have time or money for a gym membership? No worries. These no equipment needed exercises can give anyone a great workout. The show notes for this episode can be found at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 167. And as an added bonus, I've included videos of each of the exercises discussed today at those show notes. So go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 167. Have you decided you're ready to make a change? To reclaim your health and fitness, the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is here for you. I'm your host, Alan Meisner. I'm an NSAM certified personal trainer with a specialization in corrective exercise and fitness nutrition. Let me be your coach as you find your way on your health and fitness journey. All right, let's go. November is just around the corner, and I'm excited to announce a new challenge. November will be the 30-Day Squat Challenge. Join today by going to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash squat and let me challenge you to be a better you. So I wanted to uh, do this episode where I talked about some of my favorite bodyweight exercises. And, you know, the benefits of bodyweight exercises are numerous, and I do want to get into them. I think the basic key of a bodyweight exercise and what a lot of people don't recognize is that you can get a tremendous amount of benefits just from doing body weight. You don't have to have weights. You don't have to lift weights to effectively build strength and build mass. So I wanted to take just a minute before we get into the particular exercises uh, that I'm going to go through and talk about some of the advantages of using body weight exercises. The first thing is, one, they don't require any equipment. And by not having to buy equipment or have equipment, it means you can practically do them anywhere. And, and, and so both of those are huge, huge benefits when you start talking about doing an exercise program. You know, I, I do travel a good bit. And so my ability to do bodyweight exercises in a hotel room really is a huge, huge benefit, meaning that I don't have to go out and pay to drop in at a gym because some gyms will charge $15 or more for a single drop in. So when you start thinking about what that could cost to keep up a workout program over the course of a week where I'm out of town or even two weeks out of town, I think you can see pretty quickly that that $15 a day could add up and and become quite a bit of money. The other thing is that bodyweight exercises are pretty easy to scale up. You know, there's different versions of most exercises where you can make it a little bit more difficult. Typically, that comes about because you're creating additional leverage. And so... One example of that would be when you're going to do a push-up, you can go ahead and be on your knees doing a push-up, and that provides less resistance than if you raised up on your feet, which again would provide even less resistance than if you lifted your feet up and had them on a platform that was slightly higher. So again, what you're doing is creating additional leverage to make that exercise more difficult. Okay. Beyond that, you know, when you start working with bodyweight exercises, you can do this at the beginning. And in fact, with most of my clients, that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, We're going to start with bodyweight exercises because there's absolutely no reason for us to to put weight on you until you're comfortable with the overall movements because you just risk injury. If you don't have good squat form in a bodyweight squat, there's absolutely no reason for us to put additional weight on your shoulders as a function of a squat, because you're going to do nothing but hurt yourself. So it gives you the opportunity to learn the movement, the way you should be doing the movement without the risk of significant injury. Because again, most body weight exercises, unless you're doing something pretty dramatic, there's not an op- a lot of opportunity there for you to injure yourself. So again, the, the risk of injury is very low, which is another added benefit. And then finally, regardless of what your modality is that you're trying to do, there's likely a body weight movement that will help you do that. So if I'm working to build strength or power, uh, maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my my squats a little bit faster, maybe even with a jump at the end. So there's a little bit of power that comes off of that jump versus if I want to do mass, I I may move a little bit slower and create more time under tension as I do the squats slower to help build that extra mass. Now, there are some precautions. Anytime you're going to start an exercise program, you should talk to your doctor and make sure that you're cleared to do the exercises you want to do. Obviously, if you've had knee surgery or knee problems, 
hip problems, things like that. You want to just be aware of those and make sure that your body's capable of handling the work that you want to do. And it's good to clear with the doctor to make sure that that's true. Next, before you do any exercise program, any exercise, you need to make sure that you warm up your muscles properly. Typically, this can be done by just moving those muscle groups slowly at first through most of the range of motion and then faster as you get into it. But just really get the blood flowing, get the temperature of the muscle up so that as you're doing the exercise, you're less likely to injure yourself. Next, make sure you study the exercise very well to understand what the form should look like. As I go through the exercises today, I am going to describe them to you and describe what should be happening within the exercise. You can go to the show notes for this podcast at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 167, and you can actually see me doing a demonstration of these, of these different exercises. And again, apologies for my dogs. They decided that they wanted to be a part of the show. Once I set up the camera, I couldn't seem to get them to leave me alone. They were really interested in being a part of this. So I hope you enjoy seeing Angel, Jojo, and Baby being a part of my outdoor exercise program. And so it's important for you to perform with good form and then to keep that good form through the exercise. Often, as we're doing exercises, we we can get fatigued, which is what we're after. We actually want to challenge and stress the body. So as we hit that challenge phase, we start really getting challenged in an exercise, it's very easy to lose the form. But I would say once you realize that you're no longer able to hold good form, the exercise should be over. You have fatigued yourself to a point where you're not able to maintain form, so you should stop. Either stop that set or stop the exercise entirely, depending on how fatigued you are. But in a general sense, the loss of form is a key indicator that you've done enough work to tax that muscle. And now it's just time to go ahead and get into a recovery phase. So let's take a little bit of time to go into the different bodyweight exercises that I believe are the 11 best bodyweight exercises. It should come as no surprise, if you've been listening to this podcast at all for any period of time, that the number one exercise for bodyweight exercise is the squat. Now, in the video you're going to see at the uh, show notes, I'm doing a basic bodyweight squat. This is just basically where I have my feet a little bit more than shoulder width apart with my feet slightly outward. And then I'm going to go down into a deep squat where my hip crease is lower than my knees. And then I'm going to raise out of that squat by pressing my heels against the ground and using my buttocks initially. And then at some point, my thighs, my quadriceps, the front of my thighs to lift me out of that movement. Now, making sure that you use your buttocks for this movement is going to protect your knees and making sure that your knees track out over your toes properly really keys to this exercise. So I encourage you again to make sure you understand the form of a squat. They won't hurt your knees if you do them properly. The second exercise, which again, I don't think is going to be a huge surprise, again, requiring no equipment, is the push-up. Now, in the video, you're going to see me doing a true form push-up where I'm on my toes. If you're not to that point, don't worry about it. You can do a push-up on your knees. Or if you're not built up to a point where you can do the push-ups on your knees, you can do the push-ups on a counter or a wall. So realizing that changing the leverage point on your push-ups changes how hard and diff- how hard the exercise is and therefore is something that can make it easy to scale. So you can do this off of a counter or off of a bench, off of a wall, depending on what leverage point you need to make this a, a difficult And then again, moving to your knees and then eventually progressing to the full push-up, pushing through the full range of motion. So in this case, you want your elbows to not flare directly out. You want them to go at about a 45-degree angle as you lower your body to the ground. Keep your head in a generally neutral position. So you're not looking forward or looking under. You're literally just looking forward with a straight neutral position, dropping down into the push-up until your chest is nearer at the floor, and then pressing up through the movement. Again, your elbows are flared out at about a 45 degree angle. You don't want them out too wide and you don't want them in too close. The third exercise is sprints. Now in the video, I'm not really going all out sprint for a couple reasons. One, I I didn't want to hurt my poor German shepherd, Angel, who was having a lot of fun with me during this video, but also just, just basically demonstrating the exercise. I didn't feel like I needed to go completely full out. But a good sprint is going to run for roughly 20 to 30 seconds. And then you're going to take a rest period of about three times that. So 
If you run for a period of 20 seconds, you may want to take a 60 second break between the next sprint. And this is perfectly fine. Give your body a chance to recover and then do another sprint. In my case, I went backwards and forwards for what I would call one sprint. And that's only because, again, the camera and, and the distance and length that I had to cover within my backyard just really didn't wasn't conducive to me doing a full out sprint, but you get the basic idea. Again, this is not an exercise you want to do if you're cold, so make sure that you do a good proper warm up before you do any sprinting. The fourth exercise is called a hollow hold. And I've found that a lot of people don't know this exercise very well. I didn't know it until a couple of years ago. Gymnasts use it as a way of strengthening the core. And one of the things I really like about this from a core exercise perspective is it's one that's very, very easy on the lower back. So if you've had lower back problems, this is one where you can really work that core area and you can do it effectively without damaging or, or injuring your lower back because your lower back is fully supported in this exercise. And basically what you're going to do in this exercise is you're going to lift your arms and your legs off the floor and basically form a little hollow cup. And you're going to use your abs, basically your core, hold yourself in this position for a period of time. I recommend trying to do hollow holds for 20 to 30 seconds. Now that might be a little too intense for you at the beginning, but as you get more comfortable with this exercise, holding a hollow hold for 30 seconds is not going to be too difficult. Once you're able to hold this for about 30 seconds, there's not a lot of benefit to holding it a lot longer. So what I would recommend you do just to make it a little bit more difficult is to introduce a rock to this. And you can look these up on site online, but basically it becomes a hollow rock once once you start rocking back and forth. And what you're doing is you're using the momentum of the rock to basically try to break that, that cone shape that you've made in that hollow position. And so that just makes it just a little bit more difficult to hold that for a little bit longer. The next exercise that I have, the number five, is the bear crawl. Now I really like the bear crawl in that it's a non-traditional exercise uh, that you can do anywhere. Uh, as you can see, I'm crawling around a little circle uh, in my backyard, but you can effectively do this exercise anywhere. It's going to work your shoulders. It's going to build some mobility in your in your lower body and your hips and legs because you're in this kind of awkward position that we're not commonly in, and it is it is a little intense. So don't don't push too too hard. But I, you know, this is a really good exercise to build a little bit of stamina, build some strength in the upper body as you go through. And this one shouldn't require a whole lot of talking through as far as what it is, but basically you're going to get on all fours. You want to keep your lower body slightly bent, your legs slightly bent as you do this exercise and your arms pretty much fully extended as you effectively walk like a bear. And it's a, it's a really good exercise to help, like I said, build that upper body strength and build some basic stamina as you crawl around like a bear. Okay, number six, everybody's favorite, burpees. If you've never done a burpee, well, God bless you. But in reality, uh, burpees are an outstanding exercise to build stamina and build endurance, and they're metabolically challenging. So these are these are good ones to kind of give you that good metabolic boost. If you're looking for weight loss, just do more burpees. Uh, they work. And so what you do with a burpee effectively, if you haven't seen one of these, and again, I encourage you to go to the website 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 167 and see the burpee. is A, a burpee basically is a multifunctional movement where you're starting in a standing position. You basically squat down, put your hands on the floor, kick your feet back into the full push-up position, drop down into a push-up, do the push-up, bring your legs back up to your chest, and then as you raise up, you go into a slight hop and clap your hands at the top. If you can't tell from that description, this is a very challenging exercise. Some of the most fit people in the world will tell you that they hate burpees. So if you can do a few burpees, uh, you're doing really, really well. If you can do a lot of burpees, you're doing even better. This is a great exercise in many, many reasons why, but it is an exercise I encourage you once you get up to a fitness level where you can do an appropriate burpee, this is something you should use regularly in your workout programs. The next one is another ab exercise, basically a core style exercise, and it's called bicycle crunches. In this case, you're lying on your back and you want to interlace your fingers and put your hands behind your head and then basically bring your knee forward up towards your chest 
bringing the alternate elbow towards the knee. Now you want to keep your head in a generally neutral position, so don't be tugging on your head to make this happen. All the movement on this exercise should be being generated from your midsection. You don't want to be using your arms or really even bringing your or motivating your legs to, to do this. You really want to be making sure that you're utilizing your core as the prime mover to bring these, these joints together and do this thing. So again, keeping your head generally in a neutral position and rotating through the position, not pulling as you go into the bicycle crunches. Okay, number eight is the karaoke. Now the karaoke is a great movement for balance. And it is one, if you're a little bit older, you're gonna struggle with because balance is a, is a problem for us. But I can tell you individuals that fall tend to fall sideways when they're older. And the reason is they haven't built that, that lateral side to side movement capacity. So if with the karaoke, because you're actually forcing your body to go out of balance, moving in a lateral position by crossing your legs the way you are, you're literally conditioning your neuromuscular connection, which is the brain connecting with the muscles to allow you to bring your foot forward or cross. I mean, it's basically sideways, but bring your foot over to a point of catching you and preventing you from falling. So again, if you, if you have balance issues, this is going to be something you generally struggle with. And there's probably some other exercises that you can do that are similar. But, you know, this is a great exercise. If you still have general balance, this is a good exercise for you to practice maintaining that balance through a sideways movement. And basically what you're going to do is start the movement by bringing one leg across the other leg, hitting it to the floor, and then being forced to bring the other leg back to land on it. So cross, back, and then you bring the leg back behind. So if I brought it over forward, then I'm going to bring it back behind. And so it's a crisscrossing motion as you do the movement. It's kind of hard to explain on audio. So I strongly encourage you to go check out the video. And this is exercise eight, the karaoke. Exercise nine is the side lunge. Now, the reason I like the side lunge is that it's very similar to the squat. Now, but the advantage of the side lunge is that it's forcing you to move your body in a lateral position. So many people focus almost all of their workout attention into a forward or backwards motion. So you're going to do a lot of just direct up and downs, or you're going to move forward with running, walking, and whatnot. This lateral movement is going to help build strength in a very different way that's going to be very protective to your, your knees uh, and just kind of give you a different feel from the perspective of the different, glute, the different glutes or butt muscles that you would be using as a function of this exercise. So it's a little bit different than the squat. It's going to work a slightly different part of your butt muscle. It's still going to work the quads, but it's going to work more towards the outside, which is a problem area for a lot of people. And then basically it's just a good solid movement to kind of help build strength and conditioning into the knees. Exercise number 10 is a mountain climber. Now, I really like the mountain climbers because they, they kind of are a mix for a couple different things. One is you're going to have to be able to manage some strength of your upper body to be able to hold yourself into this basic position. Beyond that, they are, it is a very metabolically challenging exercise for you to maintain for any period of time. So the longer you can go with mountain climbers, the overall better you're going to be from a conditioning perspective. So I encourage this is one of those things where you're really kind of getting your heart rate up as you do these exercises. And a mountain climber basically works like this. You're in a general push-up style position, except one of your knees is up towards your chest. The other is back in a standard push-up position. So if you can imagine a push-up position, except one of your knees is up near your chest, and now you're going to alternate those feet, taking one of them back as the other comes forward with the knee towards the chest. And basically, this is kind of like that climbing motion with your hands on the ground. So you have to have the upper body strength to be able to hold yourself into this position. You have to maintain a firm core as you go through the movement because the core and the abs are going to be part of a big part of creating the mo motion of what you're doing. And then you're bringing your knees forward as you do this mountain climbing position. And then the final one that I'm going to mention is called the Samson Lunge. Now, the Samson Lunge is a, a sequence of basically four movements, for lack of a better word. It's a sequence of movements 
that basically allow you to really open up your hips. So if you have an office job uh, where you're pretty much desk bound during the day, this is a really good exercise for you to do to really help kind of rebuild some of the mobility in your hips. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a standard forward lunge. And then when you're in that basic lunge position, I want you to raise both your hands over your head and really, really open up your hips, really stretch out the, the hip flexors as you, as you get into that movement. And then turning slightly to one side, you're going to point up to the knee side. So if you're turned towards your knees, the knee that's forward in this lunge position, you're going to point up to build a stretch in that back hip flexor. So if I went forward with my right foot, my knee would be bent, my left knee would be on the ground. So I go straight up to stretch both of my hip flexors open. Then I'm going to really move over to the left and really stretch out, I mean to the, my right over my knee and really stretch out my left hip flexor. And then I'm going to push down toward the ground on my left side and then try to push down on my hip capsule on my right side. So it's really a good opening movement for your hips. And it's called the Samson Lunge. So again, I know as a podcast, this probably didn't go over all that well with, with respect to the exercises, but I did want to take a time to just kind of go through and list them again. Obviously, I love the bodyweight squat. The second one was the push-up. The third one is sprints. The fourth one is hollow hold. The fifth one is the bear crawl. Sixth is the burpee. Seventh is the bicycle crunch. Third is karaoke. Fourth is the side lunge. I mean, I'm sorry. Ninth is the sun lunge. Tenth is mountain climbers. And eleventh is the Samson lunge. Now, when I did this to film this video, I literally went from one to the other to the other. And one of the advantages of this, this became a very, very hard circuit. So even if you're really, really fit and think, okay, well, that, none of those exercises in and of themselves are going to be generally challenging to me, I can tell you if you stack each of these one after another and do them as a general circuit, it's going to challenge you. So I encourage you to look for ways to take body weight exercises and make them a part of a program. And again, you, know, you can do this anywhere. This would be something I could, if I were in a hotel room or in a hotel somewhere, I could literally go out some outside the hotel and, and do this, this little circuit and, and it'd be a great workout. And so I'd encourage you to do things like that. Go to the show notes at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 167 and you can see each of these exercises, how they're performed in the video. Now, there's no sound on the videos. I, I cut the sound out because there, I, I wasn't able to, while I was doing them, to do any uh, explanation of the exercises. But in a general sense, it gives you an idea of what the exercise looks like. So you can learn the general form and start adding these to your programs. So I really do appreciate having you here today. So thank you. I really do hope you'll join me for the 30 day squat challenge in November. Go to 40 plus fitness podcast.com forward slash squat. Next time on the 40 plus fitness podcast, we meet with Dr. Tara Allman and discuss her book, Menopause Confidential. This book really was written for both men and women to give you the information to help you manage through this period of time when women are really struggling with their health and the men around them need to understand what it means for you as well. So please do tune in next time. Until then, have a happy and healthy day. <music>